Woodland Forestry Products, Phil. Where am I going? I don't know. Looks like it's just a circle driveway. I know he's got a beautiful walk home. So he's motioning and turning around. Okay. us to back in, I guess. It's beautiful here. So here's the trailer. Super excited about this. That'll make cutting logs a lot easier. Pretty good height. Oh wow. This is awesome. This is I've seen this on TV. <laughs> well on YouTube. Yeah. But you've made so many videos. Like the one that I noticed had a lot of views was the can crusher that can crusher video that was one of my first ever videos and uh you did you that know, eight years ago yeah i always wanted to you know you can search on on the internet for like a can crusher you can't find one mm -hmm. and, or you couldn't eight years ago and that's my claim to fame that's the first electric can crusher that pops up below the ads if you so, did it eight uh, years ago i was like four months old yeah, yeah. you were or three months <laughs> Be, uh, so Mr. Reed was doing YouTube before YouTube was cool. I, what is your favorite thing to watch? What do you watch it on? Um, watch gaming videos. Gaming videos on what? YouTube. So you see why he travels with me? Yeah. Yeah. Ben travels. So you have a bunch of black walnut here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I trap tap. You know, roughly 150 walnut trees to get that seven gallons. Wow. I think it, it was like 7.8 gallons last year. Then we, we sell three or four gallons. Have you ever cut up some tap stained black walnut? I've seen it cut up. I haven't. Um, Done it yourself. A tap stained black walnut would be cool. Yeah, the problem is that the, the timber trees are so valuable as as just regular black walnut tree that I won't tap a good timber tree. Everything is a crotchy fence tree or something that's crooked right off the bat that doesn't sure. have a good base log in it. Uh, the good timber trees are all still standing. Up. How many could you tap? Well, it depends on size. I mean, you know, they, they claim you can tap an eight inch tree. Okay, but you don't get anything. Well, if you one. drill a hole through an eight-inch tree, you just got to drill one. You can put two taps on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you drill a hole through an eight-inch eight tree. You know, it's it's like a maple. Though I mean, one tree will run great, and you got one that looks just like it sitting next to it, and it don't hardly run at all. But it it it's the sap is as high in sugar content as a sugar maple. I mean, it boils down thirty-five to one. So. What is it you do here? Uh, well, we, uh, we're the only dealer for Woodland Mills in the United States. And, uh, and we're here for people to kick the tires. And so the people that, well, there's a certain amount of people in the United States, that, especially the older crowd, that aren't comfortable ordering stuff over the Internet. And before I came along and got hooked up with Woodland Mills, the only way to buy their product was direct out of Canada. And so anybody that's uncomfortable uh, giving a credit card out of the country or wants to kick the tires, this is the only place in the U.S. that you can do that. Do you know how I found you? Probably YouTube. Yep. Yeah. And it was the uh, HM130. Full assembly. Full assembly. Yeah, I shot that video about a year ago. And the only reason I put it out there was uh, after COVID, they had a few quality issues with some of the mills and some of the customers I was noticing on, on the Facebook pages were having trouble. And I thought, well, that's not very good advertising. Yeah. Um, 
And so I shot that video for those people. My customers, we went through all those things when they were here, but the guys that were dealing direct with Canada, um, the customer service is great up there, but did they call them or did they just go right straight to Facebook? And the problem with Facebook is you got a lot of well-meaning people out there. Mm -hmm. But some of the advice they're giving is not the best advice in the world. So, so I shot that video with the intention to help people. And like what, me. And what it's done in, in return is it's sent a lot of people my way. And it scared a lot of people about building them because I go through all the fine adjustments on there. So I've just, it's gone crazy around here with, with assembling mills for customers. And I do assemble a fair amount of them. Yeah. Do you ever watch any other YouTube channels with people sawing with woodland mills? Yeah. You ever watch sawing with Sandy? Yeah. I good. like Sandy. He's good. I do. He's it's good in front of a camera. He he, he's, he's knowledgeable about what he's doing. I mean, I haven't watched a lot of it. Um, but but he, he's there to help people, and I think he's doing a great job of doing it. Yeah, between you and Sandy, that's why I have a woodland mill somewhere. Yeah. Well, you know, he, all you got to do is read the reviews. Um, I've sold over 400 sawmills in the last four years. Wow. And uh, I have, as of yet, to have a customer that doesn't love his mill. Pretty cool. Well, the trailer... Did you come up with this? Like, this was your design? Okay, so I put together a couple of Woodland Mills trailers when they first came out with the trailer. When I became a dealer, they didn't have a trailer, but then they come out with the trailer, and I ordered one of the first ones they had to put it together. And... And they do a really good job of engineering a trailer that you can ship around the world. But it's very labor intense putting it together and getting it straight. If you're going to have a trailer the same length as the, the custom trailer that I sell, there's over 400 nuts and bolts in the complete assembly. Wow. And so for me, it's a two and a half day job. And I don't have to read the directions, right? And so for the average guy, you know, he's got over three days. Some guys talk about weeks or whatever because right. they're working on it at night or whatever. whatever. So after doing it and struggling to get it straight, you know, and, and I can get them straight. And you can get them very straight. It's a good rigid trailer once it's put together, but I don't have three days to put a sawmill together. So I, I said to myself, I think I can do better. So I took a track section to a trailer manufacturer said what's it going to take and I don't know we sold 60 or 70 trailers last year so this is similar to the one I'm picking up from it's identical to the one you're picking up this is what the uh, HM 130 will sit on yeah the, the, both of these are HM 130 trailers but we also make a trailer for the 126 and the 122 the same trailer goes under both those two yeah yeah so we make two different trailers if you want to see one set up we, we can walk down and I wouldn't mind that, but looking at that and looking at this, it looks like it's pretty self-explanatory once you get started. Yeah. For a second, he'll roll it to you. That's, that's how he gets it to you. He's ready for you to have it. So, so you have to stop and he'll bring it to you? Yeah. Oh, I bit it yesterday in the driveway of a maple farmer. Yeah, it was yeah. steeper than this, and I yeah, well, welcome to this I caught myself, and then as soon as I caught myself, whoop, right down I went. Just like that. Did the white one let you pet her? Yeah, he let you. What are their names? White one's Lucy, brown one's Bruno. Bruno. Very cool. So this is a little building I started building last fall. Uh, just for a place to put the sawmill stuff. Sure. I like how you can bring a log right to do the side here. Well, that was the idea. So here's, here's where I mentioned that the bolts need to clear the trailer yep. underneath. Right there. Bolts need to clear. Boy, that's a really nice transition right there. Well, you should 
you should be right there. They aren't always exactly the same angle, but you got to get the tops lined up. Gotcha. So that she she slips over it nice and easy. Beautiful. That's called a tow board. Is that an add-on? Yeah, that's an add-on. So, so if you, you know, so if you want to pick one end of the log up, there's a, a crank for it. It's in that toolbox over there. But if we wanted to pick that up, we could just crank it up in here and lob the log on there before we start on. Nice. You know what else I got from your videos that I really liked is the five-gallon pail on the side. Yeah, that, well... You know, if you're sawing outside, it doesn't matter, but right. around here, I don't want the sawdust, so I just burn the sawdust. I always got a fire going while I'm sawing. There's a toolbox I didn't know about. There's a toolbox on there that I can't get into right now because I've got too long a log on there. But I like that, too. See? Accessories and accessories. This is very cool. Looks good, doesn't it, Phil? Mm -hmm. This is exactly what ours is going to look like. Assembled. Right. Yep. Exact I think. same unit. Wow. So do you have antifreeze in that right now? I don't run any lube. Oh, you don't? Well, <laughs> I, I don't run lube uh, because I don't run pine trees. I don't have pine trees. And hardwoods has enough moisture in it already. No kidding. Um, it, my opinion is if you don't need lube, bro, don't run it. It's just something else to All worry about. All make the sawdust sticky. Um, it sticks to everything in there. Um, but if you're running a real green pine or a tamarack or I guess you call them larch out maybe in your part of the country, you have to run low with them because there's so much pitch that builds up on the blade and in the blade binds. So, Will that just roll right as it sits right there? Yeah. It rolls tough right now because it's cold out. It'll roll real easy when it's sure. warm. I, I'm not embarrassed to tell you I have no idea what wood this is. Cottonwood. No kidding. That's a big All cottonwood. All the siding on this building is cottonwood. No kidding. Here's a nice little toy, Phil. Yeah. These. This here is hackberry. Hackberry? Hackberry. I've never heard that before. Look. That was worth the trip to Wisconsin. Yeah, One cut, worth the trip, Phil. Yep, absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you, Dan. They're good at making sawdust, aren't they? <laughs> they always them to when they start. Fill her up. Well, I can take care of that problem. Yeah, that's well, right. But black walnut. Yep. That's right. Bedding, huh? Yeah, my Farm horses. Farm. And, yeah. So I might have a place for sawdust. Yeah. No kidding. Do you go through some sawdust, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. Dan, thank you. I know we want to get on the road. So now I know. Toolbox. 
what do you call this thing down here? That lifts the end. Tow board. Tow board. It won't be long. They'll have something to turn these things too. I think that's in the works probably. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. You, you know, I turn them. I'll set this thing outside here and then just put a strap on and then take the boom and, you know, pick on the strap. Or, you know, if I got a really big log, then I'd take the big fork up. But, um, you know, a tractor with forks, I don't use the can hooks on anything big. It's not worth it. Too much work. It is. It's not worth it. I get this one. The less of that you the want to do. Less of that I want to do. Yeah, man. 
Yes. Where'd your milkshake go? I ate it. I drank the whole thing. Is that good, buddy? Three beers, too. I know. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Third time at Culver's. No, I think there's my fourth. This yeah, is, my fourth. This is your third. No, my fourth. You went with me before? Michigan. Oh, that's right. You did. It's time, buddy. Gosh, I left you out here. Sorry about that. Let's get inside. It's minus five degrees. Come on, let's go inside.